as it's been unusual being gone for 13 months. Hear ye, hear ye! Come, hear the tale of two Denver kids in the know who managed to escape the plague of Tebow. <laughs> to pilgrimage east to an ancient mythical land where the people rise up with klaxon in hand to confront the oppressive Wakarian man. <laughs> A place where folks don camouflage by the acre to slay the wily 12-point buck. Or later, perhaps just run him over with their F-150 truck. <laughs> Before retiring to consume countless shiny 12-packs of grog in front of glowing big screens just like the Yuletide log. <laughs> There's much groaning and cheering and wailing and the high-pitched venting of spleens as these upper Midwestern commoners worship their mighty Lambo warriors who hail from the Bay of Green. <laughs> Into this gasping maw, the Denver kids did roam to restore the elder patriarch to his proper, freshly painted, power washed, carpet cleaned, refurbished, newly appointed home. <laughs> that would be my father. The tasks they faced were legion, countless hardships were endured. The drawings that surround you bespeak of the lessons that were learned. So now we return to stand amongst you all to share our tales of strife, cheese, and indecision. So let's all raise our cups aloft to 12 months of real blurred vision. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See, if you do something like that, it makes it sound like you're prepared or whatever, and then it's like, oh yeah, I guess it was kind of like performance art because he, he wrote a thing and did a thing. Anyhow, we've been in Wisconsin for 13 months. We moved there under unusual circumstances. It was a family thing, rather gothic. And um, I moved back to the town I grew up in, which means basically that the 35 years of my adult life didn't exist. <laughs> the, the litany is little Billy Amundsen is back in Stoughton, Wisconsin. You know, the artist. And he's married to a woman. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've become caregivers. We live with my 93-year-old dad. The normal thing is, everybody says, it must be so wonderful, you know, getting to have that quality time, you know, with your parent. And we're like, what the fuck is that? I mean, you know, people say, how is he doing? And we say, too well. I mean, the, the man is, it's, it's a challenge. Every day, it's a challenge. And Anita and I are kind of the handmaidens in the ark, the huge ark that is the life of my father. So anyhow, it's been interesting. Each day we kind of break down, and at other times things are very, very fun. Um, living in a small town, if you haven't returned to your hometown, they usually don't change at all. And the people that drove you nuts then, they aren't going to miraculously be wonderful. They're going to be worse, because they've gotten older. Just a little something to keep in mind. Of course, Anita didn't hardly know where Wisconsin was, let alone become a resident. Now on the plus side, though, we're tw my town essentially is like Lake Wobegon. It's all Norwegians, and we're all pissed because Garrison Keillor invented a bunch of people that were fictional that are much more interesting than we are in real life. But we've noticed 20 miles away we can go to Madison, Wisconsin, which is kind of, you know, the point of the movement, the troubles. And so every time we don't have anybody to talk to in my hometown, you can go to a bar in Madison, which is full of maybe as many people as are here now. The only difference is they're all screaming and arguing at the top of their lungs. It's really a good time. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, just explain a few of these pieces with some um, some uh, props. Um, I do want to thank our sponsor, Glider Cider, um, for providing the Elky Poo for this evening. I think my words go down much better if you happen to be impaired, because there's, it looks like a margin of wisdom if that's the case. Also, we're going to do some drawings. I have some giveaways, because I promised I did. Let's see. Maybe we should start with something very, very simple. Some presents from Wisconsin. We, are, we, have, we, have, too much, we have too much taste to give away a cheese head. I mean, we don't like seeing them. But this is a genuine, authentic cheese head. Uh, cup holder, so we think that might work. So grab a number, and if you have the number, claim your prize. Let's not wait till long. Just read them off, because we got to move. Okay, 457. Oh four, five, Is there a 457? Oh, it's Chris. Bingo. It's Chris. Okay. Oh. So on that note, um, one of the things we do in our little town in Wisconsin is drive around to get away from my father and get out of the house. And uh, in the dead of winter, we would go for these drives. And the, the countryside is brutally beautiful, I it guess is. is a way to put it. Yeah. And um, for the first five months, we had to make the house livable. It hadn't been cleaned in 10 years. And so all the work you see here has been done in the course of eight months. But anyhow, the first drawing I did was this one over here. 
It's called Wisconsin Winter. And uh, it basically is um, our experience being in Wisconsin for the first winter. Basically, the essence of winter in Wisconsin is snowdrifts and alcohol. And so I tried to basically capture that. Here's one of my little show and tells. You can see these are the photos I worked from. <laughs> the liquor store has a very nice minimalistic feel, and for months I kept looking at the snow on top of the liquor sign and saying, that is really cool, that is really cool. And we started taking a lot of photos of uh, snowdrifts as well, and they seemed real interesting, until I started drawing them and realized it was one of those photo real things that's just an inch by inch pain in the ass. And then also a lot of folks that have looked at it say things like, I think I see a duck in there, I see a poodle. <laughs> Over here there's a cloud that looks like a poodle if it isn't the face of a clown, so anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one piece that didn't make it that came from that period as well. This was the other thing that came from our drives. It's called um, Signs of Nature. Because the other thing I really love in the winter are rural trees. And it was something I drew when I was a four-year-old and continued to do it. And sorry, Ivar, it hasn't, didn't make it to the show. But anyhow, those are the first two. This is the third one I did. This one here is simply called Wisconsin 2011. When I left Wisconsin, I... Um, I was doing a lot of photo real kind of drawings of local farmers and stuff. That way the people in my hometown thought I was an artist and they wouldn't lynch me. You know, you show people in a little town and you're doing abstract artwork and they're just, you know, do not come into town again. <laughs> and uh, when I got there, I thought it'd be good karma to do a drawing that was kind of based on that. So uh, I found this little snapshot from 1973 of a, of a farmer at a steam show and I did a drawing of him. Um, here's, a, here's the guy blowing up a little bit. I use grids to make the drawings. We can talk about technical stuff if you want. And I drew that dang farmer, and I combined him with some Grant Woodfield, American Gothic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He does these lovely little landscapes in the background. Someone last week was looking at it and, and said something like, God, that's weird. Bill did a drawing that's unironic. And then the other person said, um, look, at the, look at the iPod. So here's a question. What is loaded on his iPod? Oh, lots of polka, definitely. I think a lot of uh, 80s Scottish grindcore and a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of German trance music. Okay, I think that calls for another drawing. Let's see what we have in here. Um, okay, if you're in a small Norwegian town, you have to tell Oli and Lena jokes. This is cross-culturalization. These are fortune cookies with Oli and Lena jokes inside them. So you can cook up um, some sort of lutefisk vegetarian rice dish and open up your uh, cookies and read things like, the eye doctor asks Oli, have your eyes ever been checked? Oh, no, said Oli. They've always been blue. Let's <laughs> have another for this marvelous prize. Okay. And if I see this on eBay, we're driving back to Denver. Okay, ready? Yes. 460, 460. 460. All right. Hey, we're coming your way. <laughs> okay. you want me to bring that sure, sure. Um, you just again? open the box and send it back. Yeah. Oh, no. So after, after getting my feet wet with those drawings, it was time to do a big drawing, kind of like the stuff I was doing when I left here. Um, one thing you'll notice about these drawings, they, I'm trying to um, cover all the different kind of mental states and things we went through. So there's some political <laughs> things, some external ones, there's some that deal with, um, you know, myself portraits and interstate, and some that deal with Wisconsin. The next drawing I made was Tower of Sarah over here in the corner. It's my tribute to Sarah Palin. And those of you who have noticed that, I've made some architectural portraits, as I call them, um, based on, you know, because of my love for the artist E.G. Rizzoli. Anyhow, um, I got thinking, Sarah Palin I could maybe do. There's some politicians, you know, as soon as you do one politician, everybody wants you to do every politician. And my few friends on the right will say, you, if you do her, you've got to do Pelosi. And I said, no, you're wrong, I don't. <laughs> anyway, and so essentially, in this case, I took the one photo of Sarah Palin, and that's this, kind of her official photo, isn't she lovely? And I drew her face, and then I just started digging around with it, you know? <laughs> digging into it and doing all these kinds of things. It was kind of a no-brainer. It was kind of like writing a little bit of comedy while doing a drawing. Okay, kids, in junior high, I won an award for this. These are some of the things that influenced me in the Tower of Sarah. I love the internet. I'm so high-tech. So you can see there's grizzlies and bullet holes and Fox News and Glenn Beck and lipstick and all kinds of lines that I wanted to use. I created a lot of businesses right here, if you look at it closely, the Maverick Tea Room, the Reloader's Lounge. Um, they have, oh, Yakov Smirnoff is performing there. Of course he would be performing there. Billy Ray Cyrus made it up there to play a live gig. It's a fucking great place to be. Anyhow, I got to create a couple things I rather like. Um, 
Bristol's Abstinence Hut seems to be the one yeah. folks enjoy. And um, when I finished Bristol's Abstinence Hut, I spray painted just do it on it. You know, some smart ass was, you know, confronted Bristol and stuff. And so that's what, it's kind of a funny way to do art when I'm like kind of writing gags as I go. And once in a while I break myself up. Um, <laughs> the other thing I particularly like is the attraction where it says CCC Levi in a cage. <laughs> in fact, that sounds like another drawing or maybe something that should really happen in tour fairs. <laughs> Okay, so let's do a giveaway based on Sarah Palin. Um, I have a little drawing I, I've got here that seemed appropriate. It's called the Tits with Sponsors. It's a tit with the Fox News logo on it. Maybe, maybe a year from now, that's what Sarah will be reduced to on her network. So, 443. 443 for this marvelous collectible. Wow! All right, let's pass it back. Sarah? <laughs> Sarah. Sarah gets Sarah. Okay, I'll, I'll leave these little visuals out so you can look at them closely. So, moving right along. Any, anybody feel like passing out? It's kind I'm of. Good. <laughs> you want to sit? No, oh, yes, I'll have a little sit. The piece I made after that was this one to my left called 1975. This piece uh, deals with um, my return to Wisconsin in a nostalgic manner. Um, because I got, think I, I, I set up a studio in the basement I was working in in 1975, and I, you know, after I graduated from college, I was in Colorado two days later working as a ski bum, and it took me 35 years to get back. <laughs> and so my memories of that time disappeared. But when I started working in the basement, that same locale, I started getting ideas that I dropped in 1975. And the way I thought back then, it started coming back in a real natural manner. It was very, very odd. But at the same time, you know, when you talk about nostalgia, it's that. It isn't just the people, it isn't just the landscape, but it's the way your mind reverts and acts in a different way. So anyhow, I thought, I want to do a drawing that has that kind of feel to it, a whole nostalgic feel. Also, a year ago, of those, those of you that haven't seen, about a year and a half ago, I did um, a big billboard for the Mellow Mushroom on, on the mall. There's actually TVs coming out of it. It's a mural, not a billboard. It's 42 feet wide. And if you go in, go back by the bathrooms. My original drawing is there. It's 13 feet wide by 18 inches tall, double Sharpies. And I noticed that they really seem to love the drawing because there's eight track lights on it and one is lit. <laughs> 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 That's the great thing about art in the real world. But it was really fun because I drew it in art from kind of automatic drawing sort of style that I always have done since I was a kid, you know, basically glorified doodlings and stuff. And so I started this because I wanted to do a takeoff on the artist George Kondo, who you may be familiar with. He did, you know, he finally is famous because he did a Kanye West album. But anyhow, he, he breaks down people's faces in these fun cartoony ways, and I thought, God, why don't I use my photos and instead of just drawing myself, try to do a Kondo. So I started with this part here, doing this freaky, freaky face. And um, I decided it had to be colored in because of the kind of cartoon thing. And then I started throwing in things that I used to do in my doodling. Um, I also realized that this was sort of an homage to 75. So I started throwing in all the artists I loved back then. For example, Jim Nutt was a big one for me. Um, Roger Brown I've ripped off most of my life. <laughs> and as an artist, just say you're ripping somebody off. Don't try to hide it if you're doing it. <laughs> People are much more forgiving. And, and then I have like Philip Gustin and R. Crumb things. So it was kind of a stream of consciousness about people I was borrowing from, and I realized, you know, it was kind of the way I thought in 1975. In addition, I found old sketchbooks and old things that I was working on back then. Some of you that have known me forever realize that I used to do a lot of wooden pieces. And so here's a piece, for example, from 1976, a little kitsch box that I gave to an aunt of mine, and she died, and so I got to have it back. It's just a <laughs> grotesque female figure made out of wood in a little box filled with... Um, well, velvet. So anyhow, if you look, this figure um, is in the drawing. And in fact, most of the figures in the drawing have come from other places. I did a big wooden harlequin once like this. The harlequin here does appear in the drawing. You can go find them in kind of a Waldo kind of thing. I have a bunch of other little sketches that, again, we can look at. This, this figure is in it. And it was really fun, you know, digging. They always say, as an artist, you can, you know, dig through your own stuff, mine yourself. And it is kind of true. I mean, I've got kind of cool ideas from this. Um, one last thing, there's a little guy in the corner, he's from a rock festival I attended in 1970, which was as gross as Altamont, I think before Altamont. It was after Woodstock and the hippies would go in the water and come out covered with leeches. And just had a real good vibe. <laughs> so the figure from that poster is in there. Okay, let's do a giveaway from um, this particular piece. Something that might be appropriate. Let's see, 1975. Oh, it's a Bobby Goldsboro 8 track. <laughs> 463. 463 for this collectible Bobby Goldsboro. 
I hope it has watching Scotty grow. If it just has honey and variations, it would be oh, this. You got it? 463? 463. Four, six, oh, okay. You got it. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right.